Welcome to section 9.6a. All right, gentle people, in the last lecture, we saw the power of Hess's law. And the idea is that if we have the delta H's for a whole bunch of reactions, we can add those reactions, manipulate them, and go ahead and generate overall reactions where we can calculate the delta H by adding up the individual steps. Now the problem is, is we don't want to list every reaction we've conducted in the universe because that would be unwieldy. Now what chemists have done is they've created a curated list. And what they have displayed in tables are something called the enthalpies of formation. To denote that it is an enthalpy of formation, I'm going to subscript my delta H with a little f. Now the enthalpies of formation have to do with a formation reaction. A formation reaction is where I make one mole of a substance out of all the elements that that substance is made out of. So let's take this example right here on the bottom. What I have here is I have ethanol. If I want the formation reaction of ethanol, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put ethanol on the product side and I'm going to go ahead and have all the reactants be the elements that make up ethanol. And so that means that I'm going to have carbon, and the elemental form of carbon is graphite. I'm going to have hydrogen, and the elemental form of hydrogen is not atomic hydrogen, it's H2 gas. So remember to go back to Chem 1A and remember all your diatomics, which gets us to the next element, oxygen, and its elemental form is diatomic as well, O2 gas. Now I can do these formation reactions at a variety of temperatures and a variety of conditions. To help curate this list even more, what I'm going to do is invoke what's called standard enthalpies. Now to demark that I'm using standard enthalpies, I'm going to put a not symbol on my delta H. And what this means is, is that this reaction is done under standard states. And that means that I'm at one ATM, I'm using pure forms, and usually this is going to be at 298 Kelvin. So you can see that this reaction is not only the standard state, it is a formation reaction, and this is the delta H associated with that reaction. So let's go ahead and take a little practice. Tell me which of these reactions is the delta H of formation of liquid water. Okay, gentle people, so the first thing to remember is that a formation reaction makes one mole of whatever I'm interested in. And so this first reaction can't be a formation reaction because I don't want to make two things of liquid water. I only want to make one. Now, the two reactions that are left over what I will see is that atomic oxygen is not the standard state of oxygen. O2 is the standard state of oxygen, so this can't be the reaction I'm after. This reaction right here meets all the criteria. This is the standard enthalpy of formation for liquid water. Now you guys can go ahead and take a look in the back of your book or on table 9.4 what you guys will see is a whole bunch of compounds with their standard enthalpies of formation listed. You guys are going to have to refer to this when doing book problems. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize any one of these values. I will give you standard enthalpies of formation, except for one case, which I will note a little bit later. So now what we can do is we can use all this data and use it to do Hess's law calculations. So let's go ahead and ask ourselves what the delta H for this reaction here if I were to go ahead and burn propane gas. Now what I can do is I will note for Hess's law that I have propane on my reactant side so I can look up the delta H for formation of propane. Now remember for a formation reaction the propane is going to be on the product side made from carbon and hydrogen. So I'm gonna to have to take the reverse of that reaction. So listed here is the negative delta H of formation of propane, because I wanna write that formation reaction backwards. Now what I can do is I can look for my products, CO2 and H2O. So I can go ahead and look up their formation reactions. 
So here's the formation reaction of CO2. Note, because there's a three there, I'm gonna take three times the delta H of formation of CO2. Same thing happens with water. Here was our quiz question. Here is water's formation reaction. I times it by four. So I'm gonna go ahead and times the delta H of formation by four. So what I can do is I can do all my cancellations out and I'm left with my target reaction. Now, all of this seems a little bit cumbersome and there's a way to simplify this kind of analysis. And that's by realizing what we have done. And so this is the equation that I want you guys to use. So I can find the delta H of any reaction by taking the sum of all the formations of all my products and subtracting the sum of all the delta H of formations of my reactants. Now you guys can see this exemplified in this analysis. So instead of doing all of this, what I could say is the delta H of that reaction up here, well that equals my products, which happens to be three CO2, four H2O, and then subtract the reactants from that which happens to be the formation of propane. Now you'll notice that oxygen isn't on here. And that's because if things are in their elemental form, the delta H of formation for things in their elemental form is zero. So I don't need to include things that are already in their elemental form. So all I have to do is plug in the numbers and I can calculate the delta H of my reaction. So let's go ahead and practice this out. I want you guys to calculate the delta H reaction for the combustion of benzene C6H6. All right, gentle people. So we need to calculate a delta H of reaction. So the first thing we need is a balanced reaction. So I'm taking benzene and I'm combusting it, which means that I'm adding O2 gas. And so from Chem 1A, whenever you guys combust a hydrocarbon, you are going to get carbon dioxide gas plus liquid water. So let's go ahead and balance this out. The easiest way is to balance my carbons first. So six carbons on each side. Then you balance your hydrogens. You've got six on each side. So I have to put a three in front of H2O. Now you can count up all the oxygen, there are 15 on the other side, so I'm gonna put 15 halves in front of my O2. Now that I have a balanced reaction, let's go ahead and write that equation I want you guys to practice with. So the delta H of this reaction is gonna equal the sum of all the delta H's of formation of all the products. And from that, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the summation of all the delta H's of formation of my reactants. All right, let's go ahead and start with my products. So the first product I have is CO2 gas, and there's six of them. So I'm gonna take six times the delta H of formation of CO2 gas, which is negative 393.5 kilojoule. My next product is water. Now there are three waters and each one of those waters account for negative 285.5 kilojoules. So that takes care of my products and now what I want to do is I want to subtract my reactants. So I'm going to put a negative sign and I'm going to put a big bracket. So let's go ahead and list my reactants. I have one thing of my benzene. So one times 49.04 kilojoule. Now you can close the parentheses off because the other reactant that you have is O2 gas and the heat of formation of O2 is zero and anything times zero is zero. So remember things in their elemental form have a heat of formation of zero. Now one thing I want you guys to be careful is that if I had multiple products, often students will forget to distribute this negative sign. So remember, each one of your reactants has to be subtracted, 
And that's why you see me use these big brackets to organize my data. Now let's go ahead and crank the number out. If I do this calculation, this turns out to be negative 3,267 kilojoules. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem1B, and remember to stay safe.